Let's bring in our Friday regular former Queensland Premier Campbell Newman. Now, Campbell, this week marked two years of Anthony Albanese as Prime Minister. You just heard what I thought. Am I being too tough on him? No, I don't think you are, mate. And uh, I'm really bitterly disappointed because going back um, to sort of around about 2007, 2008, uh, as a former Lord Mayor of Brisbane, I actually had a good working relationship with Anthony Albanese. And I've got to say, I didn't see this. My wife had a different view, by the way. Uh, it's always stuck in her craw that uh, night where he, he sort of wailed about the infighting about the Labor Party and said, I just want to fight Tories. And sadly, that's what we've seen uh, as Prime Minister. The guy who said he wouldn't touch super uh, has embarked on some terrible changes to super, particularly you know, grossly unfair changes that essentially he said he wouldn't do, where they're going to tax people on unrealised gains. Um, you know, you talked about The Voice. Uh, they're doing things uh, where they say they want manufacturing in Australia, but, you know, uh, extremely high energy costs... Uh, red tape and bureaucracy around approvals and IR changes that take us back to the 1950s and 60s, plus this constant mantra about class warfare, about bosses versus, you know, struggling workers. I mean, it's like this is 2024, you know, 30% you know, of the Australian community actually have tertiary qualifications. Don't you think, Steve, we're past all that sort of nonsense? The big industry super funds actually invest retirement savings of Australia's and need big companies to make solid profits to provide for retirement. But this guy wants to sort of pretend that, you know, we are living in some sort of, uh, you know, pre-sort uh, uh, pre, pre of uh, welfare state uh, times where, where the bosses got rich and the workers suffered. And, by the way, we've got extremely high tax takes now coming out of... Um, the federal government. Australians have a tax burden that is the highest that it's been for many, many years and nothing in sight to deal with that. I mean, you, you and I have seen a lot of prime ministers come and go and some grow into the job. You know, they get elected, some sometimes accidentally become prime minister through an in, internal leadership challenge and they grow into a job. I mean, I don't see him growing into the job. I mean, he, he's shrinking in the job. I mean, I've known Anthony Albanese for a long time. I, I, I once went out and had a very long and liquid lunch with him, which was very pleasant. I've interviewed him dozens of times. But he seems to, at the moment, he's lost confidence. And when the Prime Minister loses confidence, the country loses confidence. He's not, he's not strong on anti-Semitism at all. I think his no, left leanings no, have captured no, him there. No, he's not. I mean, th this is a real worry. Well, well I think it is. And I, you sort of mentioned before his student activist background. And, you know, to go out and give a speech uh, in the way that he did in the last 24 hours, I think sets up a quite uh, uh, difficult compare and contrast for him. I mean, Peter Dutton's not perfect. Uh, no, no political figure is, but on the one hand, you've got Peter Dutton, a solid family man, an ex-copper who's, you know, straight as a die, who, who you know exactly what he stands for. You might not like it, but you know what he stands for. And, you know, you know that he's going to be a guy who wants to protect uh, the less well-off in the community and particularly those who can't defend themselves as an ex-copper. That's his ethos. Versus Albo, who is channelling... He's in a university student from sort of 1979, 1980, 1981, where, you know, he's got all these people and uh, this sort of left-wing philosophy that he just can't escape from. And, and that's the problem on this whole thing with uh, anti-Semitism and what we're seeing from sections of the Islamic community where he cannot say no. I mean, why can't the Prime Minister say and you talked about this before, why can't the Prime Minister say that people who turn up and encamp themselves in university campuses who cover their faces and scream and shout and intimidate and interrupt classes, why can't he call that out? Well, the reason he can't is they're the sons and daughters of his friends and of, indeed, his green opponents. He can't say it. He can't bring himself 
to actually say they're wrong. He can't bring himself to say that they're cowards. He can't bring themselves to say, for example, that they should be expelled from the union movement or should they should be expelled from the ALP. So what he does is he resorts to bagging Peter Dutton. Let's have a, a quick listen to what he yeah. had to say today. We've seen what happens when the only test that politicians apply is their political self-interest. We saw it with the former PM and we're seeing it with the current opposition leader. Saying no to everything is the easiest thing to do in opposition, but it builds nothing, it helps no one and it takes our country nowhere. Hardly inspiring. Is that bloke going to make you jump out of a, out of a trench and defend your country? I don't think so. <clears throat> Well, 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 it's not. And, you know, frankly, when he starts talking about division and, uh, you know, uh, sort of saying no, I mean, you know, he should look in the mirror and he should go back and have a look at the, some of the things he was saying prior to May 2022. I mean, the, the hypocrisy is blatant. But you, the thing is, if you're the leader of the country or the premier of the state and you start talking about your, your opponent, you really are in trouble. You are demeaning yourself and the role, and it shows that you're quite desperate. You should be above all that. You know, what we need from our political leaders is a vision, a plan, and confidence to take the country or the state or the, or the ACT or the Northern Territory forward. That's what we need. People are crying out for it. And I don't, we don't want radical change, by the way, which we've been getting from this mob. We want stability. We want to know what we're getting. Uh, and, by the way, that's a message for David Crisofoli the LNP leader, who needs to tell us, I've said this before on this show, he needs to tell us, and I could segue that for a moment, mate, he needs to tell the Queensland community what he would do. If he tells us straight what he will do, he'll be rewarded at the ballot box. I'd be confident about that. And so will Peter Dutton. I'm going to talk to Ted O'Brien up next about nuclear, but I want to get your opinion on this because I can't quite work it out. We've had two uh, state administrations this week. Uh, New South Wales has said that uh, nuclear is not going to work here. You've had the, the, the Premier of Victoria, Jacinda Allen, calling nuclear toxic. It's never going to happen on my watch. It can't happen in Victoria. Can a state Premier and a state government prevent a federal government from constructing a nuclear power plant in a state? Oh, look, that's a really interesting question. I would as a going in position suggests that they can. But how unfortunate would that be? And what sort of delusion do we have uh, amongst some people in politics today that they cannot uh, bring themselves to look at this option and they keep carrying on about it doesn't stack up? You know, that's not the question that's really being asked of, of government at the moment. The question is really being repeal the ban, allow at least for it to be looked at. And... You know, it, it really distresses me greatly that you have people in high office who seem to want to pretend that, you know, in multiple Western countries, affluent countries, Canada, the United States, Finland, France, the United Kingdom, all have nuclear power. And we have places like the United Arab Emirates and other countries in the world that are building reactors because whether you believe in the climate change thing or not, I happen to think it's a load of baloney these days, we could do a show on that together. Uh, but, you know, whether you believe it or not, at least it is zero carbon emissions and it's reliable base load fat power. And, by the way, in terms of that CSIRO report that came out this week, what curious timing and, frankly, what a load of baloney that uh, bring no credit on that, you know, organisation. Another organisation that is now uh, engaged in politics as opposed to telling Australians straight answers yeah. about nuclear. If nuclear didn't stack up, why are all these OECD countries quite happy to build Correct. new plants? 100% right. Campbell Newman, as usual, thank you very much.